I get asked a lot if I had to choose just one watch or what my favorite watch is and I can't lie, I think it's the Daytona. Hi guys, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to do something a bit different and actually a bit fun. I'm gonna do a watch tag. So no, not a tag Hoyer, but a watch tag where I'll choose three forever watches and three watches to sacrifice. Meaning if it really came down to it, I could only choose three watches to keep forever and three watches I'd have to sacrifice for the greater good. It is a hypothetical game, but I think it's really fun and interesting if it really came down to it, which watches I would have to choose if it really came down to it. So, I think you guys would be really surprised to see which watches I would maybe not choose forever to keep, but which watches I would choose to sacrifice. So if you want to stay tuned for some really interesting surprises, keep on watching. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the tag, it's basically a tag where I can tag other people and get other people to get on the tag, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now, I actually saw this tag with luxury handbag collectors and fashionistas and people who really are into luxury handbags, where the tag is that they would have to choose three or five or however many handbags to keep and how many they would have to sacrifice. So if it would be five handbags, they'd have to keep forever and five handbags they'd have to sacrifice if it really came down to it for the greater good. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a really interesting question if it really came down to watches and I think it'd be a really interesting and fun question for us as watch collectors to consider because minimalism you guys. It's a hard question for sure, but it had me thinking into my collection and it had me wondering which watches, if it really came down to it, I would keep for myself and which watches I would probably give up. I think you guys would be really surprised to see which ones I would pick to actually give up. So let's get into it. Okay, before we get into the video, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on more fun watch content and make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss when I drop my next video. We're gonna start off with the three watches I would keep forever. So the three forever watches in my collection. The first watch on my list that would stay is the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Apollo 11 50th Anniversary. You guys, this is literally, let's get this guy to focus. This is literally my favorite Omega period. And it's just so beautiful. I'm not really normally one into all gold watches. I tend to gravitate towards stainless steel or if it really came down to gold, I prefer rose gold over yellow gold. However, this piece is so, so stunning and so special. She is, I'm gonna call her she because I can. All my watches are she's. She is so special. I get so many questions on this watch. What I love about the Apollo 11 50th anniversary is Yes, it is yellow gold, but if you ever have a chance to see it in person or if you really get, watch some more videos or take a look at really accurate pictures, it's not a loud, gaudy yellow gold. It's not your loud, shiny Rolex gold. It's like a matted, kind of dusty, but not dusty, like that dusty. <laughs> it's got a satin finish to it, yellow gold, where it looks brushed. That brushed gold effect is what Omega calls the moonshine effect. So it's very muted in that way and it's very wearable. Now within my collection, of course, it does stand out because it is all yellow gold, but for a yellow gold watch, she is very subtly stunning. She is literally my favorite Omega and I don't think I could ever give her up. It is my best fitting Omega and just my favorite Omega. I do love this watch a lot and I think it looks absolutely stunning on a female wrist. So yeah. Okay, moving on to the second watch I would keep in my forever collection is my AP Royal Oak. And she is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15450 in all rose gold with a whitish silver tapestry dial. She is literally my favorite AP hands down for now. 
I get a lot of questions and comments on this watch, especially from women. And unfortunately, this watch is discontinued. AP decided to discontinue this exact model and version, but the new version comes with a diamond studded bezel, which I don't like personally. I don't love diamonds on my watches. I prefer them without. I think they're a little unnecessary. I prefer diamonds on my jewelry, but that's just personal taste. So if you're a female looking for a rose gold royal oak of this size, do note that this one is discontinued, but the new version does come with diamond bezels if you are absolutely in love with the watch and you do not mind slash want it with diamonds. Now, this watch is really special to me because she is actually my first AP. And my husband actually gifted me this royal oak on one of our anniversaries a couple years back. We were casually having brunch and before the meal even started, he basically just showed up and popped open in front of me a big old AP box. And I was like, what is this? He said, open it. And lo and behold, came this royal oak, my first AP, and I was like, holy, crap i was really over the moon and my husband knows how much i love rose gold for my skin tone i think it complements my tannish golden olive skin tone really well which is why i really love rose gold but she's just so so beautiful and i love 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 white dials so this one just hit the sweet spot for me with a combination of rose gold and a white dial so alongside the memory it holds I find that she's just so special and just so stunning and really characterizes my taste and my personality really, really well. Okay, and the last watch that I would keep in my forever collection, which is actually the most important watch and I think my favorite watch that I saved for last is my Rolex Daytona in the white dial with a black ceramic bezel. She is my favorite watch. I don't know, actually, I don't know. I, mm, it's hard, but I get asked a lot on if I really had to choose just one watch or what my favorite watch is from friends and family and I don't know, I think it has to be my Daytona and I just, I love her so much. There's a lot of special memories and stories behind this watch that I can't even begin to state. She is, she's iconic. Call me a sucker for Rolex, call me a little basic, but I do I do love this watch so much. I think she is stunning. I think the Daytona has something to say it's for itself. Ugh. I remember the first time I ever saw a Daytona, I was like, what is that? Why is it it's so pretty? And this is when I knew nothing about watches. So I guess for me that spoke enough as is. I didn't even know watches, I didn't even know what the Daytona was, I didn't know the value of it, I didn't know the hype behind it, yet something about the aesthetics of it made my heart flutter and made me say, oh my god, I want one. And I specifically love the white dial one, of course, which happened to be the hardest one to get. And I think what I find interesting nowadays is I see a lot of more women wearing Daytonas and I, I notice a lot of people saying that Daytonas look better on women and this and that, but it makes me happy to see and I'm really, really excited to see that more women are rocking Daytonas out there. She's my top one. That definitely, hands down, I would never sell, I would never give away, I would never get rid of and she is definitely my forever watch. Okay, now moving on to the other side of the tag, which is three watches I would sacrifice if I had to for the greater good. I think you guys would be very, very shocked and surprised to see which ones I'm choosing. And I wanted to keep it interesting and spicy and I wanted to be honest with you guys. So first up is a Patek. It is the Patek Philippe 7234R. It's the Kala Travel Pilot. I don't have it with me currently because it's in storage in the bank, but I have photos of it when I did have it in possession. For a while, it actually was one of my favorite watches and it's stunning. It's one of my few leather strap watches. You guys know I'm much more of a bracelet gal. I'm not very big on straps, leather, rubber, NATO, any of them. Um, I just don't like the convenience of them and I'm much more of a sporty watch look gal. Now don't get me wrong, I do love the 7234R. I still have it in my collection, it's just in storage. However, the reason why I would give it up is I love it. I just don't know if I would love it enough to keep it forever and if it really came down to if I had to sacrifice a watch. You know what I mean? It's a stunning watch. It has a rose gold case with a kind of chocolatey brown dial 
and the combination of the strap on it, which is my favorite leather slash leather color. It's kind of like a camely brown, kind of like an Hermes leather, which I love, especially in the female size. It's very, very perfectly fitted to my wrist. I tend to wear it when I'm wearing dressier looks. So when I go out and I have a nice evening outfit or a dress and I want to have much more of a dressier look, I tend to pull out that watch and wear it. However, if it came down to it, it's not my favorite watch. So that is one that I would probably shoot out first. Okay, moving on to the second watch, I would sacrifice. You guys are going to be very, very shocked. So get ready. It is the Rolex Batgirl. I know, hear me out. Don't get me wrong, I love this watch. First of all, I know some people still call it the Batman and there really is no correct nickname for it. I just prefer to call it the Batgirl to differentiate between the Batman and the Batgirl. The Batman comes with an oyster bracelet versus the new GMT comes with a Jubilee bracelet, hence why some people tend to nickname it Batgirl. So I'm going to nickname it and reference it as Batgirl from here on. But if I had to, I would give her up. I think the GMT right behind the Daytona for me is one of my favorite Rolex collections. And I love her, don't get me wrong. I do wear her. I find that I pull her out of my collection when I'm wearing a blue outfit and I want a touch of blue to complement it, or when I'm wearing a dark or black outfit, which very New York. But the reason why I would give her up is because between the Batgirl and the Pepsi, I would choose the Pepsi. Now you guys know I also have the Pepsi with the Jubilee bracelet. They are basically the same identical watch except a difference in bezel color. The Pepsi has a blue and red bezel, hence Pepsi, versus the Batgirl has a black and blue bezel, hence Batgirl. But there's something about the Pepsi that I really love and I think it truly is just that difference in black or red. I think the red and blue on the Pepsi is a little more feminine and a little more wearable for me. I tend to dress in brighter, if not warmer, colored clothing. I tend to prefer that type of color palette and aesthetic, hence I find the Pepsi more wearable for my taste. Whereas the Batman or Batgirl has a blue and black on a black dial finish, which speaks a little more masculine and a little darker, which I tend not to go for. That's the only reason why if it came down to it and I had to choose because of the Pepsi, I would choose the Batgirl to sacrifice. Okay, last but not least, the most surprising one that I think will shock you guys that I would sacrifice is the Patek Philippe Nautilus 7118 in the gray dial. Now hear me out, I am going to get dragged and roasted for this. I do love this gray dial and this specific model. However, the reason why I would give up this specific model is because my heart's actually been lusting over the white dial for a while now. And I think that's what it is. If I had to choose, I would prefer the white dial. And just like I mentioned with my Daytona and my AP Royal Oak, I much prefer white dials. I like brighter, more feminine colors. And not to say that gray isn't a feminine color, but it's much more muted. It's a little monochromatic for me with the steel bracelet. The gray on gray is a little monochromatic, which I don't mind, but I just prefer white dials. So the biggest reason why I would personally get rid of this one is because I would rather have the white dial. So that's all, those are three watches I would choose to keep forever and three watches I would sacrifice if I had to for the greater good. I thought it was a really fun and interesting game and tag that I found myself actually thinking on and pondering for a long time because to pick just your forever watches is a really hard decision, you guys. It's like, it's a really hard decision. It was fun for me, but I hereby like to tag Mark and Jack, Jenny L, Time Teller and Watch Kringa. I want you guys to pick your three forever watches and your three watches to sacrifice if you had to. Let me know down in the comments if you guys like my choices or if you guys were just as shocked and surprised as I was with my list. If you like the video, give it a cute little thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more fun watch videos and make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss when I drop my next video. I will definitely see you guys and talk to you soon. Thank you for watching.